Okay. So let's see. Um, so you all know MPC. Uh, you have n parties, and your goal is somewhat to construct such a, a trusted guy in the middle there. Uh, the challenge, of course, is that certain guys are dishonest. And now it's, it's well known there are many protocols you can use to, to achieve this talk, task. However, now uh, let's uh, look at this situation here. We have an incomplete network, OK? We want to do the same. We want to build a trusted party. OK, what can you do? Well, uh, it's well known. What you do first, you complete the network using secure message transmission. And then in the second step, you can do MPC on top. Now, if you look at classical uh, secure message transmission protocols, uh, what they have in common is that uh, the network graph of the incomplete network is assumed to be public knowledge, okay? And the protocol may depend on that uh, knowledge. Now, if you consider certain networks, like real-life applications, uh, the network might contain confidential information. For instance, if your network is based on social, a social network, okay? So you know certain guys and you talk with those um, well, maybe you want to hide that information, okay? So, um, therefore, it would be bad if you would use a, a classic secure message transmission protocol if you want to hide this information. Uh, this uh, led to the uh, notion of topology hiding communication, which was introduced uh, at last year's TCC. And the goal there is, okay, you still want to complete the network, but this time, the graph is a secret, okay? So, no one should learn it. Now, it's, all, if it's clear that somehow parties need to know at least some information about the graph, okay? For instance, you need to communicate with your neighbors. You, you know your friends, okay? So, uh, for instance, if you consider that guy here, he knows uh, those, his neighbors here. But he should not learn more about the graph, right? He should not learn that, for instance, uh, those two guys here know each other. Okay, so more formally, Here's our communication model. Um, we have this, those n parties, up to t of them are dishonest. We look at uh, synchronous communication, so protocols proceed in rounds. This uh, incomplete network, okay, it consists of uh, private secure channels. Then we have uh, the network graph, which is from some family of graphs, okay. Uh, they should be at least connected, otherwise it's hard to complete the network. And uh, it could be an arbitrary graph out of this uh, family of graphs, okay? And kind of this family, that's all the information you know about the graph. Uh, as I said before, you can communicate with your neighbors, and this means that the adversary knows the neighborhood of all dishonest parties. Okay, so uh, the security we consider is simulation-based, so the idea is in the real world, you have the incomplete network, you, you run your uh, secure message transmission protocol, and here on the right, in the ideal, what you have is you have the complete network and additionally have still given the incomplete network. And you have to simulate whatever you see in the real using uh, this ideal uh, world here. The idea is that the incomplete network is completely independent of the graph of the, graph of the, uh, the network you have given. And so the only information the adversary learns in the ideal world is actually kind of the neighborhood of dishonest parties. Okay. So that's kind of the idea of uh, this topology hiding communication. So what is known? Well, uh, as I said, it was introduced at last year's TCC by Moran et al. And uh, so they looked at the feasibility of, of this topology hiding communication in various models. So here's bad news. If you consider unbounded adversaries, it seems not to be possible. There will be some leakage uh, in, in general. The same is true if you look at fail-stop adversaries, okay? So kind of an adversary who can just make its party stop at any time. The issue here is that if you have a cut vertex in your graph, for instance, this guy here, uh, so the adversary can actually find out whether a guy is a cut vertex or not, okay? Just stop it and then see whether you can still communicate over the whole graph or not. Okay, so this limits uh, the possibilities we have. So um, what they show is actually that if you have computationally bounded semi-honest adversaries, so curious adversaries, uh, then it's possible, okay? You can achieve uh, static security against an arbitrary amount of corruption. Uh, the idea of their protocol is to use MPC in MPC in MPC in MPC, okay? To hide the network topology, they use this recursive MPC approach, like virtual parties. 
However, uh, this makes it a bit uh, involved and also inefficient, okay? It gives you a huge blow up. For instance, what they, they need is uh, public key encryption in a white box manner in an MPC. So you need to do uh, encryption and decryption of, uh, in, in the MPC, okay? And then you do this recursively, okay? So the question is, can you do this with uh, less heavy tools? Okay, and for instance, the, the natural question is, can you do it just with encryption? Okay, we want to hide information, so let's encrypt. And our results are, well, we have the, the same setting here, so computationally bounded semi-honest adversaries. And uh, in this work here, we present a protocol which is just based on the DDH assumption. Um, we only use black box encryption. Okay, so we do not have any MPC in MPC. It's just plain encryption and sending around messages. And this leads to a simple protocol structure. Okay. And on top of, of such a protocol, we then also describe applications. I mean, classical application as before is, is MPC, as was uh, introduced in the TCC result. What we especially focus on in our paper is uh, topology hiding anonymous broadcast. So this is a, a broadcast where you not only uh, hide the sender of the message, but you also hide any information about the network. So that's kind of complete anonymous communication. Now, in the rest of this talk, I want to focus on uh, this protocol. I want to give you some idea of how you can achieve topology hiding communication just using uh, a threshold encryption. Okay, but first, uh, let's start simple. Let's try to do this um, uh, communication. So first of all, as we are in the semi-honest setting, it's enough to actually construct binary broadcast. Okay, once you have binary broadcast, you can broadcast public keys, and then you can complete the network. Okay, so from now on, we just want to focus on binary broadcast. Okay, so here's the first attempt. How can we do this? Well, it's simple. Okay, we have a sender here with its bit, and we want to broadcast that value, so simply flood it. Okay, the, it sends it to all its neighbors, and so on and so on, until you do this like a diameter many rounds, uh, you're done, okay? Then everyone in the network has actually learned this bit. However, it's quite clear that this approach is not topology hiding at all, okay? For instance, if you consider that guy here, he can actually learn its distance to the sender by just timing, we have rounds, okay? Timing the number of rounds until it gets the bit, okay? It's even worse, he can actually find the direction to the sender, okay? He now knows that those two guys sent him the bit. So he knows uh, the shortest path to the sender is actually over this or that node, okay? So this means the message pattern, in this case, leaks information about the network topology. Okay, so can we do better? Yes, we can. Uh, simply by using a, an OR flooding, okay? So in this case, we not only have this bit of the sender, but everyone has a bit, okay? The sender has its bit B, and the others have the input bit zero. And so what we do now in, the, in this OR flooding is the following. In each round, you just send your current bit to all your neighbors, okay? And you compute the OR of the received bits, okay? For instance, if you consider that guy here in the middle, he receives all the bits of its neighbors, and from the sender, he actually receives the real bit, okay? Computes the OR, and this gives him the actual bit of the sender. And you now repeat this process, enough rounds, and then everyone has actually the bit of the sender. So in the end, what we do in this uh, OR flooding, we compute the OR of all input bits. However, it's quite clear that this is also not topology hiding, because if, say, the sender has an input one, then you can do the same timing attack as before. You just count the number of rounds until you see a first one, and then you know the distance to the sender, okay? So not only message pattern, but also the message content leaks information about the, the, the topology. And that's where we can now go and use encryption. Okay, so here's a third attempt. Now assume that out of the nowhere, suddenly parties have a public key. Okay, everyone has the same public key. And there is some uh, trusted guy here at the bottom who has the, the secret key. Okay, so no one else knows the secret key. So what you can do now is uh, you encrypt your message, okay? And now we do the same as before. We just do this OR flooding using encrypted values, okay? So you send around ciphertext, you compute the OR on the ciphertext, and if you do this enough rounds, in the end what you have is a ciphertext here which contains the OR of all bits, okay? And then you can send this ciphertext to the trusted party, the trusted party decrypts it for you, and voila, you have binary broadcast. Okay, There's, uh, there are some issues here, okay? First, we have now assumed setup. This is bad. Uh, we would like to do this without setup. 
second, to compute the OR on, uh, on ciphertext, that's not so easy. Normally, ciphertexts are homomorphic with respect to addition. So it's not so clear how we can do this uh, OR computation there. And third, obviously, we do not have a trusted party which uh, decrypts the values, OK? So how can we solve those problems? Well, the answer is our main tool is threshold encryption, OK? So here's uh, the classical way of uh, one looks at threshold encryption. So you have a trusted party which computes you a public key and key, secret key shares, OK? Secret key shares are given to the shareholders, and the public key is given to some guy who wants to encrypt values, OK? That the guy has a message, he can encrypt it and give it to someone else who has now the ciphertext. And now to decrypt, what you need to do is you need to send the ciphertext to the shareholders, okay, which then compute you what we call a decryption share. And using all those decryption shares, you then can get back the message. Okay? Now in our case, the threshold, it's a, it's a full threshold, so uh, n out of n threshold. Uh, so you need all decryption shares in order to uh, decrypt the message. However, we cannot use directly this traditional uh, threshold encryption because we do not have such a, a trusted guy who, who distributes uh, keys. So what we need is a decentralized way to generate uh, the shared key. So instead of having a trusted party, what we need is uh, we need a local key generation. So parties, the key, the shareholders here, they can actually compute their own key, uh, keys, okay, public key and secret key. And what you can do then, you can send around those public keys. You can homomorphically add them up, okay? And what you get is then this kind of composed public key, okay? And with this public key, you can then do the same thing as before. And we also assume the same similar way that decryption shares are also homomorphically, okay? So now we no longer have a trusted party, but we can now decentralize, generate the public keys. And uh, we can also decentralize, uh, do this uh, decryption. Okay, now how can you achieve that? That's, I mean, that's a nice property, but how can you do that? Well, you can use, do that using DDH-based encryption, so Elgamal-style threshold encryption will do the job. Okay, uh, this is a special property. If you look at Bayer encryption, it's not so clear if, if you have this property. Um, so that's quite cool that uh, we have this type of uh, encryption. So how can we now do the setup? Okay, so ideally, as I said before, Ideally, everyone has now this composed public key, okay, where shareholders, all the parties, have a key share, okay? And then you could do this encryption stuff. However, there's a problem. You need to be able to distribute that key, okay? So that's kind of a circle. So we have to weaken our uh, goal. And so the idea is each party gets its own key, okay? Again, the key is still shared among everyone. So in order to decrypt under that public key, you need actually all the key holders, so all parties. But uh, now every party has their own key. And moreover, we do not distribute the key yet. So the key is just locally, okay? And how can you do that? Well, here's the idea. Uh, if you have a graph of a diameter delta, all parties are within my delta neighborhood, okay? So now you can recursively compute a public key which is shared among all parties, okay? So the idea is we do not compute one key, we compute the whole series of keys, okay, like a PKK, where this uh, PKK is actually shared among my K neighborhood. So K neighborhood means all parties within distance K of myself. Okay, so this looks then like the following. So we have here PI in the middle who wants to have, say, a level K uh, public key. So what, what, what do we do? Well, it's simple. The part, all its neighbors actually compute the level k minus one public key, okay, a public key which is shared among their k minus one neighborhood, and send it to the PI, and PI and I can just uh, add them up, and then you have a level k public key. Okay, why is this topology hiding? Well, it turns out you cannot do it for one party uh, directly. You have to do it in parallel for all parties, okay? Otherwise, the message pattern will get you. So here's the protocol idea. So in the first round, okay, you do a level zero key. It's level zero key, that's just yourself. You use this local key generation, compute the public key and the secret key, which is now your key share. How, can, how do you get the level one key? Well, simple, send your level zero key to all your neighbors, okay? And now you receive a bunch of level zero keys. You just add them up, and now we have a level one key. Okay, so a key where the, the secret keys are, is shared among your immediate neighborhood. And now you can continue this uh, scheme, as I said before, here for level 
k, you just need k minus one keys. And if you do this long enough, like diameter many rounds, eventually every party holds a public key which is shared among all the other parties, okay? So all we need to know here is, uh, let's say, an upper bound on the diameter of the graph. Okay, and uh, that's how you actually compute the setup. Now, here, uh, the next step was this OR computation, okay? So in the flooding protocol, we had the OR computation during this flooding. In each round, you computed an OR. However, it's actually enough uh, if you compute this OR right once, okay? So the idea is each party has its own uh, composed public key, okay? And it has an input bit. The idea is the sender inputs his real message bit, all the other parties input zero. And so the ideal output would kind of be the OR, which is encrypted, of course, under your own public key. Uh, and the idea would be, yeah, if, if, if it's zero, if all bits are zero, otherwise it's one, okay? But you cannot have that, okay? The issue is here, uh, ciphertexts are homomorphic with respect to addition, so you cannot directly get this. So here we use a trick. We encode the OR, okay? So instead of saying zero, one, what we do is we just say, okay, if, if all bits are zero, we have zero, and otherwise it's just a random value inside the, the encryption. And that you can get actually, again, in a recursive manner, using this uh, neighborhood trick. What you do is you actually compute uh, sums, weighted sums of the bits, where the weights are random, okay? So if your bits are all zero, independent of the weight, the whole sum is zero. Otherwise, if you have at least one bit which is non-zero, uh, you have a ra uniform random value in here, so, okay? And uh, hopefully, with uh, uh, the, the bit is non-zero, okay? So you have a slight error probability in here, but uh, if you have a large enough uh, field, that's fine. Okay, so this way you can now actually compute a ciphertext for each party which contains the OR, okay? You do this again in parallel for all parties uh, to hide the message pattern. Now all that remains is decryption, and the idea of decryption is as follows. The input is now this ciphertext containing your encoded OR, and all the parties now have key shares, okay, for my public key. Uh, and so we, what we do is we want to decrypt this, and we can do this similar to this uh, OR computation. So the idea is I send out my ciphertext, okay, which I want to do have decrypted. Uh, use, when I send out this uh, ciphertext, actually you have to be careful. You cannot just send it out. You have to blind it, otherwise you leak information. And what I get back are those uh, decryption shares, which we can homomorphically add up. So essentially ciphertext goes out, and decryption shares come in, which allows me then to decrypt uh, the ciphertext. So in summary, the protocol works as follows. First, you generate this setup. So in, uh, at the end of the setup, every party has its composed public key. Then we compute the OR, okay? The idea is that this OR contains the actual bit of the sender. If everyone else inputs zero, we are in the semi-honest setting, that's fine. And then we decrypt, okay? So this way, you can actually achieve binary broadcast just using uh, threshold encryption. Yeah, uh, that's it. Questions? <laughs> <laughs>